In this lecture, we're going to discuss three important concepts in organic chemistry known as exothermic reactions, endothermic reactions, and bond dissociation energy. So let's begin by looking at the following diagram. So we're basically taking two identical H atoms, we're combining them to form a diatomic H2 molecule. So here are our two identical H atoms. So this is the 1s atomic orbital of the first H atom and the second atomic orbital of the second H atom. So we have an electron in each atomic orbital. So if we combine two atomic orbitals, according to quantum mechanics, we're going to form two molecular orbitals. One will be the phi b, which is the bonding molecular orbital, and the second will be the phi a, which is the anti-bonding molecular orbital. Now the bonding molecular orbital is lower in energy, it's more stabilizing, and in fact, this is the bond responsible for forming our covalent bond. So our electrons will be found in the lower energy bonding molecular orbital, so phi b. Now, phi A, or anti-bonding molecular orbital, is responsible for breaking the bond. If the electrons are found within this bond, that means those electrons will, uh, will play a role in destabilizing our molecule, in breaking that covalent bond. Now, so electrons will be found in this bonding molecular orbital, and notice what happens. Because these two atomic orbitals are higher in energy than this molecular orbital, energy will be lost. So there is some change in energy that occurs when these two atomic orbitals form this molecular orbital or this molecular diatomic molecule. Now this energy is released into the environment. In other words, when my two H atoms form to create a bond, energy is released. And in fact, anytime we form bonds, energy will always be released into the environment. So let's look at this in a more simplified fashion. So here we have two H molecules at some level. They react, they surmount this activation barrier, and they form our diatomic H2 molecule, which is lower in energy than the initial. So our products are lower than our uh, reactants. And this change in energy is the same as the change in energy that we saw here. And another name for that is change in enthalpy, so change in H. And for one mole, or whenever one mole of H reacts with another mole of H to form one mole of H2, 104 kilocals of energy will be released into the environment. And this is known as an exothermic reaction. In other words, exothermic reaction is a reaction in which the energy of products is lower than the energy of reactants and the energy is released into the environment. Now let's look at the same exact diagram, but now we're going to work backwards. So we basically want to begin with a diatomic H2 molecule, and we want to somehow get to this H2. So we essentially want to break this covalent bond and form two separate H molecules or H atoms. So that means since we go from a lower energy to a higher energy, we have to input energy to go from this guy to this guy. So we input energy to break the bond to form two individual H molecules. And this is known as an endothermic reaction. So once again, endothermic reaction is a reaction in which the energy of products is higher then the energy reactants and energy is used up or inputted into the system for that reaction to take place. So once again, anytime we have an exothermic reaction going this way, going in a forward direction, we have an endothermic reaction going in the backward or reverse direction. So, once again, to sum this information up, anytime we form a bond, energy is released. Anytime we want to break a bond, 
energy needs to be inputted into our system, into the uh, molecule. Now, what is bond dissociation energy? Well, bond dissociation energy is the amount of energy required to break a bond. In other words, if we want to break this bond, we need to input some amount of energy. And this is known as the bond dissociation energy. So, for example, let's compare two molecules or, or, or two bonds. The CH bond and the CF bond. Now, CH bond has a bond dissociation of 103 kilocals per mole. In other words, it requires this much energy per mole to break this bond between the C and the H. For CF, the bond dissociation energy is 110 kilocals per mole. Now, clearly, this bond is more stabilized. And that's because more energy is required to break this bond. So if we compare this CH bond and this CF bond, the CF bond will be lower on the energy diagram than the CH bond because more energy is required to break it.